Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're tackling something, well, something truly out of this world. A celestial enigma that's basically making us question everything we thought we knew about comets. Seriously, what if one very strange visitor just flew by and forced us to, you know, rewrite the textbooks? Because that's kind of what's happening. Our Deep Dive today is all about 3II Aeolis. It's an interstellar comet and the buzz in the science world. It's huge. This isn't just like another chunk of ice from our neighborhood. It's a traveler from another star system. Super rare. So over the next few minutes, we're going to unpack the three really big weirdnesses about it. Its chemistry is odd. Its metal emissions. Even stranger. And the way it moves. Puzzling. We'll get into why this one object is pushing scientists to rethink what's even possible out there. Yeah, and it's really more than just one object, isn't it? It's like a message in a bottle, but from interstellar space. It's carrying data, actual clues from places we just can't reach yet, giving us hints about how other star systems form, maybe even about where all this stuff, all this matter actually comes from. It's like trying to decode this really complex signal from... Uh, somewhere very far away, and we're right in the middle of trying to crack it. Okay, let's start cracking there. Where did this thing come from? We know it's interstellar, right? So yeah. from way beyond our solar system. And right away, it showed up doing something weird, flying in backwards, that retrograde orbit. That's exactly right. Retrograde means it's orbiting the sun, but in the opposite direction to pretty much all the planets and... Uh, the native comets in our own system. Yeah. And that's not just a little quirk. It's a huge flag. It tells us immediately this thing wasn't born here. It suggests, you know, maybe it got kicked out of its home system in a specific way or formed somewhere really chaotic. Its path alone tells us its history is completely separate from ours, a true outsider. And what a story it's telling now that it's here. Astronomers looked closer, and the first big puzzle piece was its chemical makeup. It's got this incredibly high ratio of carbon dioxide, CO euro, to water, H euro like more than 10 times more CO euros in water. Just so you get a sense of how weird that is. But think about Halley's Comet, the famous one, right? Its ratio is about 3.5% CO euro. So when we say 3I ATA has a ratio over 10, that's not just different. It's fundamentally different chemistry. Oh, absolutely. That ratio is hugely significant. Comets are like little frozen time capsules, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They tell us about the conditions where they formed. Our comets generally have way less CO2s compared to water ice. So seeing a ratio above 10, it strongly suggests 3I ATLS formed somewhere very, very different, maybe much colder, allowing more CO2s to freeze out or perhaps in a region just packed with carbon-rich materials from the get-go. It really makes you question if the way things formed here is, you know, the standard way across the galaxy. Probably not. We have seen other variations, like Comet 67P studied a few years back. Its ratio was around 7. Still nowhere near this. So yeah, this chemical fingerprint is like a direct message about its home system. It's forcing us to think much more broadly about what ingredients planets can be made from elsewhere. Okay, so its recipe is weird. But then there are the metals. This is where it gets uh, really fascinating for me. 3I Atlas is seen emitting nickel, mass, but mm. without the iron, the Fe. That usually comes with it. Now, for anyone who knows comets, that's, that's a real head scratcher, isn't it? Normally, if you see metals, you see iron and nickel together. They're kind of a pair. Exactly. Finding nickel without significant iron is what makes this genuinely unprecedented for comets. Usually we assume these metals are locked up together in dust grains, and they get released together when those grains sublimate, when they turn to gas as the comet heats up. But with 3 Iaclas, something else must be going on. The leading idea now involves, well, highly volatile carriers, specifically something like nickel tetracarbonyl. Nickel tetracarbonyl. Okay, so it's like a gas molecule containing nickel. Precisely. And the key thing is, it's much more volatile than the dust grains holding iron. It turns into gas at lower temperatures. Mm. So as 3 has got closer to the sun, this micro could vaporize, releasing nickel on its own, before the iron-bearing dust really got going. So it's not just that there's nickel, but how it's getting out. That points to a whole new way metals can exist in these objects. That's the implication, yes. And we have solid evidence for this. Observations using the very large telescope, the VLT down in Chile, they use spectroscopy. That's where you break down the light to see the chemical fingerprints. And back in August 2025, as 3i TLIs was warming up, they saw these specific light signatures for neutral nickel, nickel A, and the signal was getting stronger. It clearly showed nickel vapor being released. And the big takeaway, as some outlets like astrobiology.com reported, is, well, it's monumental. This unique signature means 3A8 TLAs might actually represent a whole new class of interstellar object. It's not just a weird comet. It could be something fundamentally different, maybe some kind of metal-rich, volatile body we've just never seen before. Wow. A whole new class. 
Just imagine being the scientist looking at that data. You're seeing something that literally doesn't fit in any existing box. It's like finding a new branch on the tree of like you never even knew could exist. It forces a total redraw of the diagrams. That's kind of what 3IATL ICE is doing for interstellar science. Okay, so it's chemistry strange, it's metals are strange. Surely its journey itself is normal. Apparently not. It's also shown some really odd behavior just moving through our solar system. There's this thing called a tail flick, sounds dramatic, and its path is almost flat with Earth's orbit, like tilted less than 5 degrees. Why do those details matter? What's the big deal about a tail flip or its orbital tilt? Well, they definitely challenge our standard comet models again. Let's take the tail flip. A comet's tail, or tails really, they usually point steadily away from the sun. Solar wind pressure, radiation pressure, pretty straightforward physics. So seeing its tail appear to suddenly, dramatically change orientation, that's hard to explain easily. It suggests something complex is happening at the nucleus, the core of the comet, maybe really uneven jets of gas firing off. Or maybe its rotation suddenly changed. It makes us rethink the internal structure of these things. Maybe interstellar comets are just built differently or behave differently when they encounter a star's heat. It shows its internal physics might be, yo, know, quite alien compared to our homegrown comets. And then there's that near coplanar orbit, being so close to the plane that Earth orbits in. Now look, it could just be coincidence. An object flying in from deep space could arrive at any angle, but still it's intriguing. Most interstellar objects, you'd expect them to come in from more random angles relative to our system's plane, the ecliptic. So this alignment, it makes you wonder, are there preferred paths, gravitational lanes for these objects? Or does this angle tell us something about how it was ejected from its original star system? Mm -hmm. Both the tail flip and this orbital path combined with the chemistry and metals. It all forces us to really reevaluate what we think we know about these visitors. Are our models just based on local examples? Probably. Which leads to the big question. How much more can we actually find out? This thing sounds like a goldmine of information. Thankfully, there's a really good opportunity coming up. NASA's confirmed it's making a safe pass. It'll be about 1.8 AU away in late 2025. That's, what, almost twice the Earth-Sun distance? Yes, and that's close enough to be incredibly valuable, but far enough to be perfectly safe. It's a fantastic observational window. And it's not just about passively watching. This is an active research campaign. It's our best chance, maybe our only chance, with this specific object to get more detailed data. We need more chemical composition analysis to really nail down that nickel mechanism, confirm the Coyure ratio. We can get higher resolution images to study the nucleus, maybe under understand that tail flip. Every bit of light, every spectral line we can capture is potentially revolutionary. It could unlock secrets about its home system, about different kinds of chemistry out there. It's a huge opportunity to learn more about other interstellar objects, too, by studying this one in detail. Yeah. We really need to make the most of this pass. Okay, let's quickly pull it all together then. We've looked at 3i Atlas, this interstellar visitor. We've seen its incredibly strange chemical mix, that super high Q arrows level. Then the shocking discovery of nickel escaping without iron, possibly pointing to a whole new type of object we've never classified. And finally, it's weird orbital antics, the tail flip, the near-flat trajectory, all defying standard comet behavior. It's just amazing how one object just passing through can challenge so many established ideas. It's not just weird, it's actively rewriting the rules. It really is. And you know, 3i Atlas isn't just some isolated curiosity. It's acting as a catalyst, making us rethink our whole cosmic neighborhood and beyond. Its unique features give us real clues about just how diverse other planetary systems might be, the ways planets form, the ingredients available. It seems it can vary wildly out there. Every anomaly we find in it, it's like another piece of a giant puzzle, helping us understand how matter behaves, how systems evolve, just how much variety there is in the universe. It seriously pushes our understanding way beyond, you know, the familiar stuff in our own solar system. And that really leaves us with a fascinating thought, doesn't it? A question for you listening. If just this one object, 3i ATLS, through up so many mysteries and challenged so many models. What else is out there? What other cosmic messengers might be silently drifting through our solar system right now, carrying secrets that could completely rewrite physics and chemistry as we know them? What fundamentally new things might we learn from these visitors from other stars? It seems the universe. Well, it has way more surprises up its sleeve than we ever imagined.